चाहता है We wish you were still with us. We think of you all the time. New eyes do watch over us. Please light the bwan and guide it. What if the darkness returns? I have to be ready. I light it by myself so you can ignore your responsibility to this family. I need to protect this family. You're drowning in your own fear, my Ari. Why is the moon so more important than us? Look out! See how their heart break bleeds. I miss you. Mahal ka namin. Boom, there you go. That was the trailer for Reimagined Volume 2, Mahal. It's your boy Kuyu P. This is Nerds Rule the World and it's the Show Pal Show. I'm back with another Show Pal Show. I haven't done one in a while, but I I I got to. I got to bring it to the people because this is a project for the people, my people. And as you see on the screen, I have a special guest, longtime friend, uh known her from the mixed Asian media stuff, and then she did this amazing project from the VR previously called Lutao, I hope I'm not pronouncing that right. And now she has Reimagined Volume 2 Mahal Miss Michaela Chernoski Holland and I hope I didn't mispronounce your name right there Michaela. Now you're good, Kofi, you're good. I love it. All right, shooting off air horns right now. Boom. It's your first time Michaela. I'm not going to deafen you. But the air horns are just to show the excitement because I'm so excited for all of your hard work that you've done making this project a reality. uh so excited to see it so needed for us as a people to inspire the next generation and taking on technologies that not too many people are up on but it's the future and you just love to see it i know i love to see it so uh so excited to talk to you all about this and uh right now you're making your premiere as of this recording it's debuting the world premiere at Tribeca Festival uh Tribeca Film Festival 2023 how's the vibes right now how's the energy it's Woo-hoo. done you can relax huh no nah, well i'm here on site at spring studios i literally like took myself into a little conference room like literally like less than 200 feet away from me is the Tribeca immersive floor um and you can think of this as like almost a more of a comic con than of a traditional film because with vr um it's so bespoke you're putting people through your exhibit your installation and so we literally are working with docents who are helping people get into headset we're literally designing our own physical installation space which we did some really fun exciting things with our installation space um and you know you're also dealing with audiences and crowds so it's not like you can get 300 people in a 300 seated theater and have them all watch the same thing uh we have people coming saying like are you fully booked like when can i come back and see it um and that's why we also have a booking system so where i'm sitting right now you know, i'm still like kind of figuring things out with my docents who i'm working with i'm still figuring out things with the booking system but the feeling of the fact that it's out there in the world the feeling of the fact that my project and my team's work is out in the world for them to be able to enjoy and share is an incredible feeling and it has been just an amazing amazing run so far we have some of the cast in town some of the filipino and filipino american voiceover artists we have some of the crew coming in tonight uh, who worked on the project on the back end and i just really feel like this is a moment for us all to be celebrating yes 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 celebrate uh have a few if you drink <laughs> later just to bring it down uh, not too much cuz there's still a lot of work to do this weekend but um just so happy for you so happy to see this happen the 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 idea come into real realization and now here for the people it's so beautiful um but let's start where the journey began and uh you were an award winning creator brush them shoulders off Michaela with Latao another prior uh Philippine American well Philippine based uh project you know uh as Phil Lam's the both of us you know kind of showing love for our culture and our people is just always something I love to see and and when you when I saw and heard of Latao that you did I was like wow it was amazing and rightly so you won some awards for it cuz you you bring in the knowledge to the people and it was so beautiful so cool it was just a different experience I've never experienced before so it just made my gateway into this whole VR thing just wow the future and and now you're doing it with reimagine volume 2 mahal um tell me how uh, from the tao to now this reimagine project came together working with i believe julie cavalier as a partner yeah 
So the DAO was a project that was funded by uh, Oculus back then, but now Meta VR for Goods platform. And so it basically paired uh, VR creators with a nonprofit. And so the nonprofit that the creator was paired with was the Yellow Bit of Hope, which is this incredible nonprofit that uh, is all about access to education. And in the Philippines, children sometimes who live on more remote islands have to swim or walk long distances. And so the yellow boat is this representation of the yellow school bus. Um, one of the first things they started doing was actually building little yellow boats for those children so they could get access to their school and their education without getting their books wet, without having to swim, without having to lock, walk long distances. And that was amazing because that was really my first time working in a fully um, animated social impact world. Like I grew up on Disney, I grew up on Pixar. Some of the other projects I've done in VR have been social impact focused and they have been animation, but they've been very like realistic. They've been very like we are in the middle of World War II or we're on the mall, or, we're on the moon and we're traveling to Mars. Right? They're trying to be very um, photo real. And with Latao, we went very creative, right? We went very like Disney Pixar animation style. And I loved it. I was so enthralled with that process, with the concept art, with the poster title art, with the animation um process with the layout process, moving the camera around. And so I really felt like I would love to do this again. And I would love to do this where we're not just telling the story about Filipinos, um, but a story about Filipino Americans that they could identify with. And also a story that isn't just showing, you know, a lot of the things I had to work with was like poverty and poverty porn. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to do this beautiful animation project versus doing like a live action 360 film was because I didn't want to just show impoverished Filipinos, I wanted to show like the resiliency and the innovation and the love and the joy these these people have. And so we decided to use animation as that medium. But for me, I was like, you know, we're still talking about, you know, these kids that have to swim and get to get to school. What if I did a project about Filipino gods and goddesses? Like, what if I showed us in this like really epic, amazing way? And that was really something that I kind of put in my hardest of hearts and, um, kind of tucked away for a while during the pandemic. Um, and then slowly but surely that um, that wish kind of came true. Uh, I was connected with Julie Cavalier, who had this idea to retell a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. And I was working with her as a producer to help her um, kind of refine her pitch to get funding in the VR community. And while we were refining our pitch, one of our mentors was saying to us, we should make this into a series. It's a great idea. How do you retell cultures, folklores, fairy tales from a more gender inclusive standpoint with female directors, female producers, female voices, but also um, how you expose these older uh, ancestral knowledge in this new sort of uh, emerging technology medium. And so we quickly decided that Julie would continue as the volume one's director, which is Nisa. It's already out on MetaQuest headsets for free. And then I would continue as volume two's director, which became Mahal. And then volume three would be a guest director. And that's been this multi-year project I've been a part of. And I'm so excited that I finally got to do my project about Philippine mythology. I'm so excited I finally got to do my project where we get to see Filipinos as gods and goddesses. Um, and I'm really stoked to be able to share this with the world because the story is so personal to me and the theme of the story is so universal. I love that. Love that. Love that. Um, oh, so excited and just love just female, just making the movement as a as a as a girl dad. You know, yeah. I, I just love it. I love everything you're, you know, Michaela, I, you know, I've been a friend and fan of yours for a long time. Um, and then talking to my daughter, who's also a dancer as well, because that's your roots as a dancer. And, yeah. I, and still is, still is. Yes. Um, you know, my daughter, I don't know if I ever told you, my daughter's with the Washington Ballet as well as ABT. She does, you know, initiatives up there every now and then. They're like the, you know, the the, the additional schooling that, things that they have. And uh, she's done stuff with Dada. But anyway, she wants to be a dancer like you. And just with what you're doing, out, even outside of dance with this is just, I love it. Let's see it. And you're the example that I show my daughter. And just, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it. Um, so, uh, you, you, you talked about a little bit how personal the project is with you. If, and, uh, I, I was wondering if we can, you know, just yeah. talk about that a little bit because I know it means so much and it's dedicated to him. Um, if we could talk about that and just the, the, a little bit with me, cause I know some of it in, goes along with some of the, 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 the idea of the script and the mythology aspects of it. If we can just dig a little bit more if, that we can share for people that aren't at Tribeca right now and right. Are, are ready to go and see it at some of the film festivals coming up. Uh, to see it. Yeah. So this piece centers around the theme of grief. The reason I uh, decided to name it Mahal is because Mahal is not only the Tagalog word for love, but it's also the Tagalog word for expensive. 
And to me, that means love comes at a cost, right? Like when you love somebody and that person is no longer in your life, whether it's from a breakup, a death, a relationship being kind of uh, growing apart, you experience that deep pain and that deep loss, but you wouldn't experience grief if you didn't first love that person. So the cost of loving somebody is usually grief when that person is no longer with you. Um, And that's why I think Mahal is the perfect title for this piece. I also feel for me that um, the exploration of grief has been a lifelong journey. Like I've never fully been able to understand uh, or look my grief fully in the eye without seeing it as multiple characters. And that's really what these deities represent after many, many scripts being revised, after many, many rounds of feedback from the executive producers at Meta. They wanted me to go deeper. They wanted me to make this story more clear. Um, and it really landed on my personal story. Um, as a nonfiction storyteller, I'm so used to using other people's stories as my muse and my medium. I was so resistant to using myself as my muse and as my medium. But as this is my first foray in a narrative, this is my first foray into writing a script like this, um, I really found power and I really found clarity in my own voice. And that was because my father died in a car accident when I was very young. And I feel like I've grown up um, fairly fatherless my whole life, even though I have a stepfather. Um, And I've just started to realize all these characters of grief that I have seen and dealt with. And um, little pieces of those characters of grief can be found in our uh, Filipino pantheon in Mahal. Love it. And uh, man, thank you again for sharing that. And uh so happy for you and i know uh you know the spirits and the energy and life is happy for you for everything you're doing with this um so with that being also said as phil ams the both of us right you know we grew up here we didn't really learn or at least i didn't learn a lot i had to really pro- plug and prod my mom to teach me anything about the culture because it wasn't in our books we didn't get that history and so to just even get a morsel was so difficult um, thankfully the 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 new gen has like the internet, you know, and they can easily, but I didn't have that. I had to go to the library and check out encyclopedias to la- learn about the Philippines. <laughs> um, what was the aspect of, okay, you get involved with Julie, you're you're you have this idea, this story concept. Uh, mm-hmm. what was it like uh, getting the team together and researching and, and how rewarding was that for you to learn about our amazing Filipino gods? Yeah. Oh, well, this is going to go a little deeper into my personal story, Patrick. Um, I didn't ever actually explore. I love Roman and Greek and Egyptian mythology, as I think we all did growing up. We were exposed to those kind of pantheons. But I never actually realized there was a possibility that there could be Philippine mythology until I came out as queer to my very Christian, conservative, Catholic family. Um, And at that point, you know, I really felt like there had to be a more inclusive, a more welcoming a narrative for queer people in our Filipino history that wasn't just wrought with Catholicism and Christianity and imperialism and colonialism. And so at that point, I started doing my research and digging into mythology. And I remember being on Instagram, looking at the Ashwang project. I remember Googling. And even now, there isn't a ton of resources, right? Um, I really loved the idea of using anthropomorphic gods. Um, A lot of other indigenous cultures in the Philippines, you know, because the Philippines, King Philip, it's not even supposed to be a country. A lot of these uh, peoples uh, actually believed that their uh, spirituality was tied to nature. So they saw gods in trees and they saw gods in plants and they saw gods in uh, the ocean. But the uh, Tagalog pantheon that I'm following is one of the only ones that actually felt that um, gods and goddesses were actually like these kind of human uh, supernatural beings. And so that immediately drew me in, you know, that idea of having a family very similar to like a Zeus or an Apollo or... Uh, an Artemis was very similar in the fact that you have Batala, the creator god, you have Apalaki, the sun god, you have Mayadi, the moon goddess, you have their sisters, Tala of stars, Hanan of the morning and the dawn. And so already I was starting to see this like familiar, familial structure form. And I knew I wanted to do something with this little pantheon of family gods. And so right when we started to kick off Mahal, the first thing we did was, you know, do a bunch of research into indigenous clothing, indigenous jewelry, and what would royalty look like in an indigenous Filipino culture? What would just sort of um, royalty who lived near an ocean look like? What would royalty who lived more inland in the jungle look like? And we just basically put together this gorgeous Pinterest board, inspiration board. And I knew I had very specific 
archetypes for these characters. I knew Apaloki and Mayadi was going to be a very specific twin-like archetype. I knew I wanted Apaloki to be slightly shorter, slightly leaner. I wanted Mayadi to be very muscular and very athletic. Um, I wanted Thala to be sort of our like, you know, very classic like d and I wanted her to be sort of the craftsmanship or kind of the um, the one that's always like working. I wanted Hanan to be sort of this like fairy type um, archetype where she felt very delicate and very young and very sweet. Um, and so, you know, I kind of found this in all of these characters and we really built their characteristics and their character designs around very real indigenous pieces that we saw in our Pinterest boards, in our research. And then from there, we actually built a, a, a Filipino indigenous inspired village and island. And that was a ton of research. And even the villagers have a different shape language. They look like little dolls, but all the clothing they wear is inspired by indigenous um, prints, indigenous patterns, indigenous um, what was what they would have access to, you know, um, in the village, there's literally chickens and goats. And I literally had to Google, will there be chickens and goats on an indigenous Filipino island, right? Like I really wanted to make sure we were as authentic as possible. Um, and the most exciting part was that my dream for these deity characters with that was that they would look like Filipino royalty in their sort of normal modes, but then they would power up and suddenly turn on their God modes and they would these bright, bright orange colors or bright blue colors or bright yellow colors. And they would just like transform into these like God-like beings. And so one of my favorite parts of the piece is seeing them transform into those beings like on a snap um, from these like really approachable kind of royalty-esque kids to these like all powerful deities that just their eyes are glowing. They're like, they're using their powers. They're lighting the moon. They're lighting the stars. And like, that's one of the, things that I think is really magical about using VR is that these things feel even more epic using scale and using sort of the, the sense of self. Um, and then the final piece, which was actually really difficult to tackle, was what was heaven? A lot of the indigenous Filipino cultures that I learned actually felt that heaven was underground and not above ground. Mm. Um, and so where I took a lot of inspiration was from the ocean. You know, I think Filipinos really feel connected to the ocean. We feel really connected to um, just the way the water moves. And so if you go into our experience, the celestial realm, yes, it has a bunch of puffy clouds. Yes, it has a very like heaven-esque feeling, but the color tones, the color palettes to me are inspired by the ocean. They're inspired by coral reefs. And even some of the um, details that we did in the sky, even though they seem inspired by the Northern lights, to me, they're more inspired by like how the light reflects off the ocean when you're underwater. Wow. So that's just a little bit about how we thought about when we were building our celestial realm or our, our God's home that they live in. Oh my gosh, I love this. I so love this, Michaela. You know, this is super cool. First off, like like you, and I'm so uh, thankful for you sharing your the personal reasons on how you like discovered mythology. Um, I very much kind of stumbled uh, across that as well because I was raised in a very Catholic Christian. There's a lot of, I was raised in the South and them Southern Filipinos are on a whole nother level. Let me just tell you, very Christian, very Catholic and yeah. But, um, and I had friends of every background, every race, color, creed, and, and sexuality, you know, and we grew up loving Roman and Greek myth you know, mythology because we was a kid in that school. And then to find out that Filipinos had that, like what? Amazing. So I, I, I love that and thankful that you shared your journey. And yeah, that was very much the same for me and just discovering all that. When I found out that uh, in the past, Filipinos would bury our, our, uh, our loved ones in trees, you know, they would kind of bear out, you know, and I'm sure you found that in your research. I was like blown away. And, but I just love that notion because it just continues the the building out and nurturing the tree. And just, uh, that just seems so deep to me. And I, I just love that because I'm a very nature guy and as well. So um, yeah. I just love that. But now hearing more uh, about how you built this up is just so fascinating. And I'll just let's share a little bit, y'all. I, I've been along the way with Michaela a little bit on this. I, I wanted to do a lot more, uh, but through our friendship, she shared a lot with me and I try to give anecdotes where I could, but um, this is just such a beautiful project and I've seen such a hard work from her on her behalf. And it's like what Pixar does y'all, like she put in the work and she made this happen and you let's see. It. And that's why Pixar films are so good. And that's why Reimagine Volume 2 Mahal is so good y'all. So head out to the film festivals when it's touring right now, go check it out. You're not gonna be disappointed. It's super dope. Um, so yeah, I just love, uh, all of this, Michaela, this is super cool. Um, so you touched on, uh, the creative aspect, 
um, and uh, getting uh, all the looks correct and making it beautiful, which it is. Um, I had a question in mind, but I, I somewhat lost it because I just am floored by how you said that for the the heaven type aspect of it. And and, and you're, you're exactly right, because I did, did it didn't really come across my mind because, you know, like uh, in Roman Greek mythology, they have like the heavens. But that's not when I, I was starting to think like, yeah, when I looked into the film, piece, they really didn't have that. And it was more underneath the earth, which you're 100 percent correct. But you flipped it a little bit to also the water, which makes perfect sense to me. And the oceans, because we are the Philippines is surrounded by water. And now just that notion just blew me away. Like, I just love how you kind of flip that. It, it makes perfect sense to me. Um, let's just talk about, I guess, um, since I'm just lost in the waves with you, Michaela, right now, uh, about the amazing voice talents who help yeah. bring your words and your vision to uh, the ears and scope when people put this headset on and they go through this journey, uh, getting that amazing group of talent together. Because there's some winners in there. I was looking at the cast. I'm like, whoa, oh, we didn't, we got that person. I know that person. T yeah. Tell me about putting together your cast. Well, you know, we worked with the incredible Side LA, which is an amazing voiceover recording and casting agency. And I really was, you know, very honest with them that I really wanted to cast Filipinos and Filipino Americans, even if, and they were like, is it okay if they're mixed race? Do they have to be full Filipino? Do they have to be fully, um, you know, um, uh, fully fluent in Tagalog? And I was like, no. Like they can be mixed race. They don't have to be fluent in Tagalog. We'll work with them. There's some Tagalog words in this piece, but it's totally fine. Um, but it was really cool how like on board they were with that. And, you know, a couple Southeast Asians, I said, look, I don't want to close it all off. Like they're Southeast Asian. Like I still want to listen to them. And we did have a few people from like Thai and um, a few people with a background as Malaysian audition. Um, but the incredible part, which was funny, they were like, you know, um, there's a lot of Filipinos in performance. This was actually quite easy for us. And I was like, I had a feeling, you know, I was like, I didn't think it would be that hard to find a full cast of Filipinos. And side was like, no, like we had some really amazing talent submit talent. We didn't even know we're Filipino, you know? And so it was so cool to have that moment with them, but I'm so blessed and so lucky by the VO cast that we have. Um, we have uh, Anne Yatko, who is very well known for her work in anime and in video games uh, being our Hanan. We have Lee C, who is based in the Philippines, um, who voices Arthala. We have Daphne Nitsuga, uh, who is uh, an up-and-coming VO actress, but absolutely incredible, um, who is voicing our Mayadi. And um, making his voiceover debut is actually Loretto Delgado III as Apalaki. Um, and Loretto has an act, a background as a commercial actor and as a uh, film and TV actor. So that is our pantheon. And then we have one villager character who is a lead role as well. And this is the Catalonian. The Catalonian is inspired by the spiritual advisors that were in the indigenous Philippine culture, oftentimes women and even sometimes trans women. Um, these are also kind of, um, I'm not very good with my Tagalog, but there's this B word that is like the the Babylonian, um, who is also kind of considered a Catalonian. Um, the Catalonian is more specific to the Tagalog indigenous culture, but of course, like the Basayan, the Vasayans, the Ilocanos have their own names for the spiritual advisor, who is basically the connection to the gods or the connection to the spirituality for the village or for the tribe. And so our Catalonian is almost our is acts almost as our pseudo narrator for the piece. Our Catalonian sets up the God, it sets up the risk, it sets up where we're at in this world, why we're here in this world, um, before people really get to see these gods and get to see this village. And our Catalonian is played by Eileen Descalar, who is an incredible voiceover actress, but also um, an incredible photographer and has a background in music. And uh, just even getting to hear her story was so interesting to me. So I'm so stoked with this cast, y'all. And then we have a special appearance by Travis Atreo, who actually sings our credit song. And our credit song um, is a remix, a rendition of a very traditional Filipino lullaby. And instead of this lullaby being sung from the perspective of a mother, it's being sung from a perspective of a father. So that's just to leave you with a little bit of our Filipino talent and family that's involved. Um, and the way the Filipino community has just embraced this piece since we've announced it has been so incredible. I love it. I love it. Such a wonderful cast. You you really did the damn thing, Michaela. I love it. When I saw it and just to come together and being around it in a way was just amazing to see. Um, but let's also, you know, we, we gave a nod to the voice actors. 
the visuals. You, you, we try to do a Pixar thing like you did, like let's how was so beautiful and so dope. And then to me, you then took it to another level with this. I'm like, you know, trying to show my background right now because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Can we give a shout out to the amazing creative artists that, you know, came up with all the designs and then came up with this final look and just feel that I just, I need a full blown like feature. You know, you know, <laughs> we have this great VR that we're going to experience. But now, Hollywood, I need y'all to knock on Michaela's door, give her some more money and make this happen into like a full animated feature. I need this in my life right now. Oh, you know, I do have a dream to spin it off as like a animation series, like, you know, quick 20 minute shorts um, um, in this world of Mahal. That would be like the dream to work with like a Disney Plus or with like Avatar Studios to like spin this off. Um yeah. Oh, my gosh. So if anyone doesn't know, Quill is a 3D painting platform. It's very similar to Google Tilt Brush, but it's Meta's version of 3D painting, which means you get into headset. One of your controllers is the paintbrush. One of your he one of your headset controllers is the palette. And you are literally just like Disney animators used to do hand painting. But instead of and hand animating, but instead of using, you know, the mediums that they were using, which was traditional analog mediums of like um, glass and paint, we are using the 3D medium of VR. And so my team and I, after concept art phase finished, we were in VR almost every single day using VR to storyboard, using VR to create the layouts, the animations, wow. the environments. And so the Quill artists that work in this field are insane because not only do they have to keep in mind all of the technical difficulties that come with 3D painting itself, right? Because you're not in a computer engine. You can't just copy paste delete. You actually have to go in and hand stroke every single little detail. But you also have to keep in mind that we are exporting this experience to a tetherless headset. So it's not tied to any sort of engine power except for what's in the headset. So that means we have to export this build to be 1.5 gigabytes. The build itself is probably at least three gigs. So we are optimizing every single stroke, every single draw call, every little pixel is just a little bit of storage that we have to compress down while still maintaining the beauty and quality of the environments, the beauty and quality and smoothness and fluidity of the animation, all of the amazing VFX that we have in this piece. And so this team is the absolute all-star team. Lucas Marker, like basically my lead guy, he was our lead animator. He was my main storyboard artist. He and I worked together on the layout and the camera movements for the whole piece. Um, huge shout out to Roxandra Gabriella Papascu, who was my incredible environment designer. The island is pristine. The celestial realm is insane. Um, Tyler Friedel, who worked on the VFX. He also worked on the optimization. And he also worked um, on basically any little thing we would need from him. <laughs> hey, Tyler, can you just jump in and do this really quick? He's like, yeah, sure. Can you just jump in and do it? Yeah, sure. Like, Tyler's amazing. Um, Roxandra also did all the incredible title art that is behind you, as well as the main posters that you see on social media. And then finally, we have Samia Kala, who is our incredible animator. She jumped in and animated all of our villagers. All of our villagers are animated by this incredible, incredible human who has her own VR piece called Tirtayeb, which is a piece about her Lebanese uh, culture and how her Lebanese culture is um, expressed through food. Um, I also have to uh, give a huge shout out also to our audio team. Is that okay, Patrick? I know we oh, talked yes. about yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd love to give a huge shout out to my audio team, Cassidy Swanson, our sound designer and our audio mixer. So instead of you know being in a Adobe Audition and mixing the film fully in Adobe Audition, we actually got into Quill, and what we did is something called implementing audio, where we literally took an audio string and we paired it to a character. So we 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 basically linked the audio to a character's head so that when the character's head moves that way, it's coming in from your headphones that way. When it's this way, it's coming in from this way. And he literally went in and he implemented little audio pieces throughout the experience so that you really feel like you're in this spatial world. The ocean is literally implemented to be just that far away. So as the camera moves closer to the ocean, the ocean sound gets louder and the jungle sound kind of fades away. 
you don't really used to, you don't get that move mainly in a movie theater, but when you have headphones on and a headset on, you get to really hear that sound design movement. And then the main superstar of the audio team, of course, is our amazing score composer, Teresa Barrazo, who I am so lucky I got to work with. She's an incredible Filipina score composer, one of the most I think sought after composers of her time in the Philippines. She does features, she does Netflix series, she does um, incredible documentaries. And so Teresa's project is, Teresa's name is probably on any any modern day um, piece of media that is being distributed at a wide level in the Philippines. And so she worked with me very closely to make sure we balance the nuance of you know, traditional indigenous Filipino instruments, the nuance of emotions with grief, and also this um, nuance of just like, how heavy do we need to go with score? How does the score need to be jam packed wall to wall? Do we have these moments where we're a little more quiet? And so this amazing, amazing, tiny team of independent artists put together what is today Mahal. I'm so humbled and grateful to have been able to work with them. I couldn't have asked for a better team. Wow. Wow. Any more? I, I want to show love to everyone. I do want to show oh, love yeah. to everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who else uh, did we miss? Yeah, uh, who did yeah, we miss? Yeah, it's all good. My amazing concept artist, Lucia Lee, who did all of the designs for all of the amazing characters. Like, without her, these characters wouldn't have any life. Um, Max Ridong, who did all of the incredible environments as concept art. So these are all 2D. And then James Ng, who actually came in and clutch when we needed a concept artist just to do a couple last little minute details. He came in and came in clutch. Um, I can also shout out to Ju Julie Cavalier, of course, the producer of the project, who's been with me since the beginning. Um, and Ryan Thomas and Gora Fujita, my amazing executive producers over at Meta, who just pushed me until I thought I was at my breaking point, but actually was just at the comfort zone um, and told me I could go deeper and I could make the story better. And I really did. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without Eleanor Thibault, who came in and helped me co-write the script. Because again, I just really struggled with that script. Um, so she came in and just really helped me clarify exactly what I was trying to say and really helped me make these characters feel tangible to an audience, even though they were tangible in my head. Um, so yeah, that's that's the main production team. And then, of course, I'll shout out, we had an amazing cultural advisory council who really came in at the beginning and helped make sure that I was being as true and authentic to um, Filipino culture as much as I could and as much as possible. And then we kind of took all of that great feedback and we ran with it for the rest of the experience. And yeah, I just wouldn't be here without them. I also have an amazing festival team. Um, my published my publicist, Alex Chester, uh, is doing an incredible job getting the project out there in the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander community here in the U.S. and abroad. And of course, Aaron Budd, who's um, been my dear friend and has taken VR projects all over the world with me, is our installation co-producer. Um, and there are some stuff, some special things about this installation um, that I'm happy to talk more about, but I also feel like I've been talking a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Props, 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 and props to you, Michaela. You put it, I know how much this project meant to you, and uh, as we all know, and dedicated to uh, your father. Um, but just all of this hard work and just seeing this all come together is such an inspiration. And uh, as a Filipino American uh, 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 and uh, being of the culture, just to have this for the next generation, for me to share with my daughter, to share with my family, everyone I know is so special and i can't thank you enough for giving us this uh to do that um it's so 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 dope homie yeah. i just you love to see it and just it's it's just it. amazing vibes amazing energy and man i'm just so happy for you and i just want all the world to know and check this out everybody i'm gonna have all the links in the description below for michaela and just everywhere this is going um make sure you do all the follows so you can Check it out when it comes uh, to a festival near you until it gets its eventual loss, uh, uh, loss, uh, release uh, on MetaQuest and everywhere. Um, but please follow and support. So we can get, uh, you know, Michaela said 20 minutes. I want a full feature. I, I, I want all the additional things to happen with this because it's so special and so beautiful and just so needed. Um, we, we need to feel seen and this is helping us feel seen. And I just, I dig it in every way. Um, yeah, because it goes, it, it's bigger than just being, you know, the co-star in Crazy Rich Asians. It's bigger than just seeing ourselves as day-to-day -day people. It's it's bigger than just seeing ourselves as the best friend or as the funny kind of like comedy relief. Like, this is us seeing ourselves as gods and goddesses, seeing us as like, you know, seeing our generational trauma even, you know, yes. each of these embrace something that I think all of us might 
you know, be, be able to relate to, you know, Apalaki is just trying to keep things going as if it's normal. Like, it doesn't matter. He's not here anymore. We have to keep up the facade of our legacy. And Mayadi feels this deep anger and resentment. And she has this abandonment issue. So it comes out as her feeling like she has to protect her family and be the strongest one. Thala has this workaholism and creative isolation where she's just going to be able to express herself through her artwork because no one's talking about their loss and she doesn't know how to process it. And then Hanan, the youngest, has this people-pleasing thing where she's like, I'm just going to help everybody else and forget my own emotions and forget my own grief. And that's generational trauma. Like, that's what we're all working through on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. And honestly, you know, if you really want to support this project, if you really want to get behind it, we have an incredible t-shirt collab with Kuyate. Yes. That, that was going to be my next question. Let's uh, talk about the collab with Kuyate. Yes. AJ Raphael uh, has an amazing t-shirt company alongside his incredible wife, Alyssa, uh, called Kuyate, which is a play on Kuya and Ate. Um, and they were super stoked to hear about this project. And so we are actually collabing them with a swag collaboration. We have uh, our first deity t-shirt that's available on their website. Um 50% of those proceeds go straight into our production's pocket, straight into the production pocket of my team who's putting in their time and energy into this installation that we're doing here at Tribeca. It goes back into my pocket to help me relieve some of my personal costs of making this project happen. Um, but we also have uh, an incredible premiere party uh, that we are putting together with a fiscal sponsor that is open to donation. So if you would like a tax break for being a part of this project, for being a part of the Mahal family, we would love for you to get involved. Um, those are some of the small ways. I mean, another great way is just share the projects. Let people know this thing exists. Let people know that we're telling the stories of our gods and goddesses and of our generational trauma and of our off- semi-authentic reimagined culture. You know, like, obviously, I can't say this is to T the most accurate thing. I definitely spun on the culture in my own personal way. But, you know, at least for me, this is a way for us to see ourselves as empowered, even though we're human. Yeah, it's a gateway for everybody to check out. You know, no one should take everything that everybody else puts out there for the standard, the canon, you know, because everybody puts their spin on things. So I love it. I love to see it. It's beautiful. Um, So you're currently at Tribeca Film Festival right now as of this recording this weekend premiering. What uh, Do you have other festivals uh, that you have announced or on the docket that we can say? We have festivals on the docket. I can't say yet. Okay. Know if but they should it. follow you where and uh, it's in the okay. description <laughs> reimagined vr is the project's home uh that's mm-hmm. where you can find us on the website on the instagram on the twitter um you can also follow me personally michaela Ternaski holland that's my instagram my website is my name and then my twitter is i'm michaela th um you can definitely check out uh nisa already right now on the meta quest again it's a retelling of brothers grim um, but Volume 2 Mahal will be available on the Quest headset, uh, all Quest headsets, all Meta headsets a little bit later this year. Um, and that announcement will be coming soon. Awesome. I love it. I love to see it. Everybody, support, please, uh, my, my good friend, Michaela Chernaski holland Support Reimagine Volume 2 Mahal. Again, all the links are in the description. Uh, I'm going to do all I can to just shout it out to the world. Um, so beautiful, so amazing. And then also, as you can tell from just t- this conversation with Michaela, she's got a lot behind her with everything she's done. I'm bringing back Show Pal Show, y'all. This is going to be episode 111. I've stopped for three months doing Show Pal Show because I've been so busy with so many things. And uh, Michaela knows because I was supposed to do a lot more with this, but I haven't had time. But uh, I'm going to show her all the love and do what I can. But I will hopefully... When Michaela's schedule comes free in between these festivals, have a longer conversation uh, and get into her whole story um, and, and find out what makes her tick. And, and we can all just be inspired because she is so amazing. Everybody, Michaela Ternaski holland check out Reimagine Volume 2, Mahal. Again, all the links are in the description below. It's your boy, Kuya P. This is the Show Pal Show. Mahal kita. Salamat. Woo! All right, there's a cut, Michaela. <laughs>